What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Heated Shenanigans Podcast. Whether you're watching or listening to this on YouTube, I'm your host, Scott, and I am joined by my good friend from ATD Promotions, Mr. Anthony D'Alfonso. You still there with me, Anthony? Yeah, it ticked me off for a minute there, but I'm back in. Yeah, we're good. I did a little... Well, boot, I got a little concerned there. It's like, oh no, where'd it go? The uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I've mm-hmm. actually used this particular recording studio, okay. and it's a hundred percent different now because now they've got a widescreen version. So this looks much different than before. So, but it should, it should yeah. be good. Um, well, man, first and foremost, man, thank you so much for taking time. I know you've got a lot going on. This is the start of the new season for us, booking talent and. Sure. You got a lot of cool yep. stuff coming up. Uh, go ahead and talk to everybody out there. Let them know about what, what you got going on and uh, the kind of the history behind ATD promotions. Sure. Uh, well, this is this is my sixth year in the business. Um, started in 2018. Um, I'm based out of the Pittsburgh area. We, uh, we do mostly Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Erie, Pennsylvania areas, uh, but we do branch out and do other conventions. Uh, This will be our first year at uh, Squared Circle Expo in Indy. Uh, We were just at WrestleCade in North Carolina this past November. Um, So yeah, that's that's kind of of our history. Um, We'll be uh, starting off the new year, uh, first weekend of March. We have Gail Kim coming in uh, for three appearances in Pittsburgh, uh, Niles, Ohio, or I'm sorry, Boardman, Ohio. In Erie, Pennsylvania, uh, she'll be with us at the Horror Rum Con in Pittsburgh, uh, and then two stops uh, the next day at Renegade Toys in Boardman, Ohio, and uh, Action Toy Man in Erie, Pennsylvania. Very cool, very cool. How long have you been working with Gail? Uh, this is going to be our first time, actually. Oh, okay. See, because I know she had shown up at Heroes and Legends uh, before for Maples, but I didn't know if you were the, the guys that had brought her in. No, no. Uh, this will be our first time with her and uh, our first time with Victoria as well for Squared Circle. Oh, uh, you couldn't have picked a better person. I, I had the pleasure of working with Victoria in the past. Complete sweetheart. That, that's what I hear. We had uh, Candace Michelle uh, for Russell Kane. She's, she's another super sweet person. And she's very good friends with Victoria, and she was telling us w- what a great person she is. Absolutely. And yeah. it, it's good to, to network like this, too, because you start talking to one person, and all of a sudden you're, you're booking their friends and working up the, up the ladder of a who's who of professional wrestling. Mm-hmm. So being in the, the, the talent agent aspect of professional wrestling i mean there's so many various parts there's the wrestling portion manager referee what have you has being a talent agent changed your outlook on professional wrestling at all quite quite a bit actually um i tend to try and look at uh things now through more of a business lens and as a fan um and that that can be interesting sometimes (laughs) Uh, example. What? Give me an example of that. Mm, well, I guess you just kind of come to understand why things are done a certain way. Um, and you might not agree with them necessarily, like in terms of um, storyline or, let's say, for example, um, why they push like Brock Lesnar or Ronda Rousey in WWE so much. Um, but then you come to understand, well, they're they're the box office draws. They're the ones that put put the butts in the seats and make the money. So you you tend to understand that a lot more. Uh, do you have anybody out there? I mean, you guys have been doing this for six years. You've been doing a fantastic job. What Thank talents you. are out there that, that you definitely would like the opportunity to work with? Uh, that I haven't worked with? Correct. Um, hmm. Probably uh, Melina would be one. Um, I think she would do well in Pittsburgh. She hasn't really been here because um, we, you know, we try to um, 
bring people in that really haven't been around because um, a lot of times it's um, it can get to be like the same people over and over again and I try to be I try to be different and new uh, especially when it comes to also booking like for conventions um, which we, which we tend to look at first time guests so like with That's Squared good. Circle it's so like with Squared Circle Expo you know we have Victoria coming in that she'll be that'll be her first time there uh, Fred Ottman, Tugboat, Typhoon, Shockmaster. That'll be his first time as well. Um, but to go back to your original question, uh, Melina would be one. Um, probably probably Val Venus. I think he's another one that really hasn't been around uh, our area and would do well. Um, and that, that may happen later this year, we'll see. Um, hmm. I haven't really I thought too much about it. Uh, yeah, those are two good names to start. <laughs> well, hey, those are those are excellent names. Kind of without yeah. spoiling anything, I know the Squared Circle Expo's got a couple more announcements to make. Do you guys have any more people lined up, or? Uh, no, this is going to be it. Um, we actually <laughs> had looked into getting another table and perhaps bringing another guest or two, but I guess they sold out of tables pretty quickly. As soon as they went on sale, it seems like they went right out, which is yeah. good. I mean, that's good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it seems like it seems like their convention is getting bigger from what I hear. This will be the first time, but it it looks like maybe they had um, like forty to fifty guests this year, and now this year they're, or I'm sorry, last year. Now this year they're pushing sixty. From what I'm hearing, it, it keeps growing. They're going to announce a, a good handful tomorrow night during the Rumble, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, we have one more that has yet to be announced. Um, okay. looking forward to looking forward to that announcement and not without spoiling anything. Cause I, I kind of like them to, to do the announcement. Sure. This individual would tie in to, uh, Victoria that you have announced to be bringing in. Really? Okay. So we'll, we'll talk about it once we, once we wrap up, but sure. Sounds good. <laughs> so. I mean, speaking of, of tomorrow, we got the, the Royal Rumble, one of the big four pay-per-views for professional wrestling and WWE in particular. What are your thoughts, man? Who who you got winning the Royal Rumbles? It's been a pretty hot topic over the last several months. It has. Um, a lot of people think it's going to be Sammy, but I, I, I really think they're going to go with Cody uh, for the Madden's Rumble. I think, I think that's just a given. Um, I know that there had been rumors that <laughs> Excuse me, The Rock was going to be coming back for WrestleMania, but now it doesn't sound like that's going to be happening. So maybe they'll go with, maybe they'll try and split the titles and go with Cody on one night and Sammy on one night too, because, you know, the story with Sammy kind of writes itself. So I think it makes the most sense that Cody w would win the Royal Rumble tomorrow uh, for the men's. For the women's, uh, I'm, I'm not quite, I'm not quite as sure. Maybe Rhea Ripley? Um, but I'm, I'm not as sure on that one. <laughs> These are hard. I mean, do you think we had talked about Sammy and, and Cody and, and your point. Do you think this year out of all years, they could get away with a draw for the men's Royal Rumble, having Cody and Sammy win? I think just based on past precedent, certainly. Yeah, absolutely. With uh, Lex and Brett in 94 and uh, well, Batista and Cena with, and did not end up being a draw, but yeah, I, th I think they could go that route. Sure. Very possible. Excellent. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the Royal Rumble, man. It, it's one of the, the biggest pay-per-views of the year and it, it's such a great time and definitely wanted to, to ask you how many people help run uh, kind of segueing back here to ATD promotions, which guys definitely check out their Facebook page, Twitter, Instagram, they are everywhere. Make sure to keep up with them. A lot of great talent coming up, especially with Gail Kim. Thank you. Uh, oh, you're welcome, man. Uh, how many people do you guys have running ATD? Because there, there's so much work that goes into booking people. Uh, so it, it's it's me and uh, my business partner, uh, Michael Rickard. He came on uh, at the beginning of 2022. Uh, he owns Wildcard Video Games in Niles, Ohio. Um, up until uh, the beginning of last year, it was just me. 
uh, but now it's a it's a joint effort. Probably takes a lot of stress off you having a second person in there to help you out. It, it does for sure. He's 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 been tremendous for real. Say when when we had started uh, heated shenanigans, there was four of us. However. Uh, two of them didn't really have the drive to, to keep going and to want to pursue anything. So they kind of just stepped away. Colin and I've been running it ever since. And man, it's hard. Like it is running, not even just running the podcast, but running like booking as well. My goodness. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's it, you know, every, every, every event that we have, we learn something new. It's, it's a constant learning experience. You never stop learning. What would you say was your favorite event that you've worked so far? Hmm. Uh, hmm. I would say probably um, we work with Northeast Wrestling every year uh, out of Connecticut. They come into Ohio and uh, Pittsburgh and do shows. Um, and I think, I think probably my favorite one was uh, 2021 when I had Carlito. Definitely a good talent to work with, Carlito. Uh, very good, very good guy. Very chill, uh, pretty down to earth. Some might say he's pretty cool. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see myself out on that one. There you uh, go. <laughs> but with, with all of the all the traveling associated with with booking talent, is, are there any places that you've really wanted to get get ATD booked at for? be convention, independent wrestling show, what have you. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we've, you know, um, getting out to Philadelphia and doing the icons of wrestling has been on my list for a few years now. And I think we're probably going to end up pulling the trigger on that this summer. Um, so that's, that's been a goal. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about the Baltimore celeb fest. So we're looking at that as well. That's so fascinating. Like being out there on the East coast, like, what what is professional wrestling like out there? Because I've never really outside of Raleigh, North Carolina. That's really the the most I've been out on the East Coast. What what's the experience and the atmosphere like? Uh it's pretty. Um, it it can, it can be pretty hectic. Um, there's, you know, they have a lot of up and coming talent that comes through there. Uh, you know, the convention scene is pretty active. So you know, big event. Uh, like I said, icons, Baltimore Celeb Fest. There's there's a lot going on, so you know they get they get quite a bit of talent through throughout the year coming through there. <laughs> so, what would you say uh, kind of got you into professional wrestling in terms of like drawing you in and making you want to watch? Uh, well, as a kid. Um, I, I was just kind of scrolling through the TV one night and came across Monday Night Raw, and it happened to be um, Goldberg's debut in the WWE, and he, he, it was on Raw, and he speared the rock, and it just kind of stuck from there. <laughs> Did you at all watch any, like, the older stuff, like the, the Attitude Era or the, the Golden Age in the 80s? I did. So, like, you know, I uh, bought... I would buy a lot of DVDs. Um, the first one I ever bought, I think, was Mick Foley's uh, Greatest Hits and Misses. That, that was a favorite of mine. Um, Mick's my all-time favorite wrestler. Um, I got, and and especially once the network uh, went live, um, I was able to um, catch up on a lot of 80s stuff, ECW, uh, Attitude Era, WCW. I, I've seen a little bit of all of it. I was more of a I was more of a ruthless aggression kid growing up. So, you know, let's see, two thousand three when when I started watching, I would have been like eight eight years old. Yeah. Man. I'll tell you the the one thing that I miss the most about being a kid was all the action figures. Because today, like, they're so advanced. Right. Very true. Very true. And, and I'll tell you, too, <laughs> for all the action figures I had when I was a kid, I wish I still had them in the box because was, that would be money. <laughs> <laughs> I 
It would be a lot of money. Like For sure. For sure. I mean, you go back and look at the runs of some of these, like especially the, the older WCW, they're just a solid – I don't even think they're six inches of just mm-hmm. hard plastic. They right. can't move. And now today, like the kneecaps bend, the wrists can move. You can assign different heads to them. And they come with right. titles. As a mm-hmm. kid, we didn't get any of that. No, it was it was pretty basic. I mean, it was the uh, designs were still fairly advanced compared to, um, you know, the Hasbro's of the '80s and stuff like that, but. But man, it's really it's really evolved and and gotten better. I, I definitely would agree. So I, I definitely again hard to not notice the beautiful intercontinental title you got sitting behind you. Yes. <laughs> what would you say is your favorite piece of wrestling memorabilia that you own? Hmm. Probably the intercontinental title, actually. Um, I don't really collect championship belts, but I was always a big fan of the Intercontinental title. And when the opportunity came to uh, acquire that pretty cheap, I jumped on it. Did you get it like through like WWE Shop or like through a friend or? Yeah, a local store uh, that was carrying some belts. You have a local store that just carries replica titles? Yeah, actually, my business partner um, he gets in some belts every now and again. Uh, he's primarily video games, but he also has um, wrestling figures and belts and that type of thing. Um, so you should check him out if you're in Niles, Ohio, wildcard video games. Absolutely. God, I wish we had that here. Like, to go in a store as a wrestling fan, there's a replica title that you can just get. No shipping and handling. Just pick it up. Right. <laughs> That's a okay. wrestling he still has a couple uh, replica belts in his store right now. He has the old, the WWE spinner belt uh, that John Cena introduced, and I think he has a current version of the WWE title as well. He wouldn't happen to be sitting on a old NWA title, would he? I don't believe so, no. God, those are hard to come by. They sure are. <laughs> so do you do, like, the Funko Pops at all or any of that type? Uh, I, I do. Um very very limited genres i have i have the wrestling ones um i have quite a few signed um i have a lot of um in the rock and roll section um the old musicians uh, and also uh looney tunes i'm a uh, big looney tune affectionado uh, the old school looney tunes um, a lot of those are uh, limited edition and up there in uh, value Looney Tunes are always good to go with. So, with the when it comes to the the Funko Pops, mm-hmm. what would you say your favorite one is? I would say probably. I'm looking at them right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, probably, probably my four Mick Foley's. I have I have his original uh, single Mick Foley one sign and also his uh mankind cactus jack and dude love those probably probably the whole set is is my favorite say uh, also this would be a great time to plug in here that if you are a mick foley fan you should definitely check out squared circle expo april 7th and 8th 2023 at the wyndham hotel in indianapolis indiana as mick foley will be there live and in person to sign your funko pops live right here in Indianapolis. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's so much fun doing these things. Like yeah, what was it that sure. what was it that got you into doing like talent agent work because it's hard to get into. It's incredibly difficult. It is. It is. It's it, it can be it can be a very tough business, very lonely business um, cuz you know when, when you're first getting into it, nobody's really um, interested in helping you or giving giving you advice. Um, you're kind of on your own. It's a learn as you go type of thing. Um, but but for me, um, how I got involved uh, probably like seven or eight years ago, um, I went to a convention out in New York, a wrestling convention. Uh, got to know some of the vendors out there and 
uh, became friendly with them and um, found out, wow, this is a thing that people actually do. Why, why isn't this something that I can do? So I figured I'd give it a shot, and uh, here I am six years later, and it's only gotten bigger. Who was the first talent you got to work with? Uh, actually, Adam Rose. Uh, we saying. did, we did two shows uh, with Big Time Wrestling out in Altoona, Pennsylvania, and Hagerstown, Maryland. So is that that was like a joint one, right? That wasn't just like a sole, sole one that you had done. Uh, correct. Yeah, we 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 brought Adam Rose to uh, their shows. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Get the meet and greets and work the match. Were you at all nervous your first time going out there and booking talent? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Um, but I mean, just just nervous from the aspect of of what I was doing, not necessarily working with talent, because it's like you know, these are they're they're regular people too. Um, you know, great a lot of great people, but it's 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 not like they're they're better than anybody else. We're all we're all on the same way, wavelength, <laughs> so to speak. I 100% agree with you. Um, before we before we wrap this up here, uh, Anthony, I definitely go ahead and take time. Go ahead and plug out there your social medias where people can find you and your upcoming appearances uh, with Gail Kim again and anybody else you might have coming up. Sure. Uh, you can find me on, find us on Facebook, uh, Instagram, or Twitter at ATD Promotions. Um, our first event, like I said at, at the beginning of this episode. Uh, March 4th, we'll be in Pittsburgh at the Horror Realm Con with Gail Kim. Uh, she'll be signed from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, and then the next day we'll be at uh, Renegade Toys in uh, Boardman, Ohio from 5 to 7 p.m. And early that, earlier that afternoon we'll be at Action Toy Man up in Erie, Pennsylvania uh, from 12 to 2. Um, our next event after that will be the... Well, no, actually... Uh, this past week, we actually signed on to do uh, the International Wrestling Cartel's 22nd anniversary show. Uh, that'll be, I believe, March 25th down in Pittsburgh. Um, can't can't quite say who just yet. Uh, they'll be announcing that first. Uh, but we do have somebody booked, and they'll be in uh, Niles and Ohio and Erie as well the next day. Uh, and then we'll be out in Indianapolis for the Squared Circle Expo, uh, Victoria and Tugboat will be with us. Uh, really, really excited for that one. I think it's going to be a good show. Uh, after that, May 20th, which is a Saturday, we'll have the uh, Niles, Ohio Retro Toy Market, and our guest is Tito Santana. Uh, I've worked with Tito once before. Very, very nice guy, a true, a true gentleman. Uh, and then that's, that's it so far. Uh, we're currently working on some stuff for the summer. Uh, we'll be at... Um, Young, the Youngstown, Ohio Comic Con. That's uh, July 7th and 8th uh, at the Canfield, Ohio Fairgrounds. Um, guests to be announced. And um, also the Butler Area Toy Show. That, that is, I believe, July 22nd. Um, we did that show last year. It was our first, first one. Happy to be, be, be back. And um, Lots more after that. Just stay, just stay tuned. Let me put it to you that way. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's good. That's good. Fair point. Um, so, guys, we're going to wrap this up here. I want to thank my guest, Anthony, so much again from ATD Promotions. Check them out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Tell your friends, especially if you're a professional wrestling fan, if you've got a professional wrestling independent promotion in your area, reach out. Uh, they've got a lot of great talent at their disposal. And these are great guys to work with. You definitely will not be making a mistake booking through ATD Promotions. Uh, for Scott here at Heated Shenanigans Podcast, guys, we're going to sign off. And, guys, happy Royal Rumble weekend. Be safe, and we will see you on the next episode.